Hello, nice to have you join us on Newsroom Series. I'm Dominic Iwiwu. Today we would lay our focus on the south-south region of the country. But before we get into that, let's have a look at our top stories making around at the moment. The Senate suspended its rule to admit the seven ministerial nominees appointed by President Bola Tinubu last Wednesday. The upper legislative house began with Dr. Nentawa Yewada, the nominee appointed to replace Beta Edu as the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Reduction. Other appointees for screening are Bianca Odumegu Ojuku, nominated as the Minister of State Foreign Affairs, Megari Dingyadi, nominated as the Minister of Labor and Employment, Jumoke Oduwale, nominated as the Minister of Industry, Indi Maha, as Minister for the newly created Livestock Development Ministry, Yusuf Atta, as the Minister of State Housing and Urban Development, with Suwaib Ahmad as Minister of State Education. Also screened today was May Gary Dingyadi, who has been considered for the portfolio of the Ministry of Labor and Employment. Let's see what's going on at the moment. By this same Ogo Senate, he's still an appointee of the Senate because he has not resigned. He's going to resign after we have confirmed him. Sir, very well in the legislature of Kano State, majority leader, speaker. In fact, just like what someone said the other time, it's a round peg in a round hole. Mr. So President, the President of this country, we need to commend him for looking around to pe people like you, not many before us. And I tell you, and I want to confirm to you that Kano is now taken over by the APC, inshallah. <laughs> With his appointment, because the vacuum we have, because you feel that vacuum. You feel the vacuum. Now, Mr. President, if you are watching us, we are grateful to you. You love Kano. Just recently, you gave us the headquarters and not so the Union Commission. Just recently. Kano is grateful to you. We shall continue to support your government. We shall continue to help to strengthen your desire to bring prosperity to this nation. The Federal High Court sitting in Abuja on Wednesday barred the federal government from releasing further monthly allocations to River State. The court in the judgment that was delivered by Justice Joyce Abdul Malik specifically restrained the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, from allowing the states to draw funds from the consolidated revenue accounts. Justice Abdul Malik held that the receipts and disbursements of monthly allocations since January this year by the River State's Governor, Simonen Alai Fubara, was a breach of the Constitution and aberration that must not be allowed to continue. The judge held that the presentation of the 2024 budget by Fubara before a four-member Rivers House of Assembly was an affront to the constitutional provision. Justice Abdul Malik specifically said that the governor's actions was a gross violation of the 1999 constitution. The judge subsequently restrained the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Accountant General of the Federation, Zenith Bank and Access Bank from further allowing Fubara to access money from the consolidated revenue and federation accounts. There was a celebration in Abwa Udwa local government area of River State as the state government officially handed over an eight-kilometer road to local authorities fulfilling a long-standing promise to residents. The newly completed road, which connects six communities, had been delayed for years despite previous flag offs exercises in 2016 and 2019. However, the current administration completed the project within a year, bringing much anticipated relief and improved accessibility to the area. Residents of Abua Odua local government area in River State are braving the wet weather to celebrate a long-awaited development as the state government is set to hand over this 8.168 kilometers road to them. The road, connecting six communities, was flagged off for construction twice in 2016 and 2019 with intended completion timelines of eight months each. But this was not fulfilled until about a year ago when Governor Simina Lai Fubara's administration took up the project. 
of the handover ceremonies attended by state government officials, representatives of the construction company and community members as their leaders express gratitude for the project which is expected to serve estimated thousands of road users daily. The old Okbeden people has been in total darkness as a result of lack of access to the eight communities in the clan. The Messiah has come to dry away our tears, and today we are seeing a new brown road. The fact that you are handing over this project within the side one year after years of neglect means a lot to us. This applies to so many other roads within the local government area that if fixed, the economy of the local government area will be given a swift boost. Speaking on behalf of the governor, the Commissioner for Works highlights the importance of infrastructure for community well-being and encourages local leaders to prioritize its maintenance. On our part as a ministry, we want to charge the chairman to speak to the people who own this road. Now he's uh, more or less in charge and uh, look after the road. The road has about 2.2 kilometers of drains. We'll employ you at all times to see that the drains are kept free of silt. Because the areas where you have drainages, if they are blocked and you have flood water on the road, the lifespan will be shortened. He also announces upcoming road projects to improve connectivity and other regions to further boost economic opportunities. Like I said, a bigger project is coming all the way to Abua Central. I will not tell you all the details. So that is, and also for the people in Abua Central and beyond, we have awarded the east-west road to Abandele, which is a 14.5 kilometer road. I know that that road will shorten your journey to Port Harcourt. We've also awarded the completion of the Abandele Bridge. So there are two projects that are designed to make you happier and make life easier. The Abua Odua Road is officially commissioned by His Royal Highness, Chairman of Abua Odua Traditional Rulers Council, Temple Jamala. On top of Abua Odua. The road is expected to open up economic benefits for the area. Still in River State, the Hydrocarbon Pollution Remediation Project, HYPREP, has planted over one million mangrove seedlings along the shorelines of Ogoni land. This is part of ongoing efforts to restore the region's heavily impacted ecosystem. This revelation is coming from the technical assistant to HYPREP while on a field trip with a team made up of both local and foreign participants at the just-concluded Climate Change Summit held in Port Harcourt. The group visited various remediation and restoration projects undertaken by HYPREP in its efforts to clean up pollution caused by oil spills. Our correspondent, Deborah Agbalama, now reports. As the year begins to wind down, sites of the ongoing cleanup exercise in Ogoni land have continued to receive different concerned groups who want to gain first hand knowledge of the progress. The latest visitors are participants from the just concluded climate change summit held in Port Harcourt, the River State Capital. They take a tour with the high prep team to oil impacted communities like Goi and Bomu in Gokana local government area of River State, observing ongoing remediation efforts, including shoreline and mangrove restoration. High Prep's technical assistant, Peter Leno, reiterates that the planting of over one million mangrove seedlings is essential to the restoration of biodiversity in Ogoni land, where decades of oil pollution have caused severe environmental damage. High Prep has planted over a million seedlings, over one million seedlings of man mangroves in Bomu, and then it's still counting. If you can see here, most of these places here, you can see newly planted mangroves. They are part of high press intervention to address the oil pollution in Bomu and other parts of Ogoni. All these places before now 
used to be thickly vegetated with mangrove. So the oil destroyed it. Meanwhile, a lecturer from the Department of Science Laboratory Technology at the University of Port Harcourt, Dr. Chi Kang who is part of the delegation, shares her assessment of the level of work done so far. Honestly, I want to say that High Prep has done a very great job. Great because, like, I did my PhD program. Uh, during my PhD thesis, I had to sample um, Gokana. I took my samples from Gokana, um, local government area, like the oil impacted area. When I got going there, I was even telling some of my colleagues, and I was like, wow, there's actually a lot of improvement in terms of oil spillage as rec compared to what was recorded when I went there about seven, eight years ago to sample. High Prep is really, really doing a great job. I'm being very, very honest. High Prep believes that sustained environmental restoration efforts will help communities in Ogoniland regain a healthier and revitalized ecosystem. Deborah Abalama, Channels Television News. The traditional ruler of Wari Kingdom, Agayama Atuashe III, the Olu of Wari, is urging students, particularly those in Wari, to take their education seriously, describing it as a major tool to attain a bright future. He was speaking during the maiden inaugural edition of a one-day seminar for secondary school students in Wari Delta State. In a normal situation, these children on the streets of Delta State are supposed to be in classrooms receiving formal education. Instead, some are seen begging for arms and others selling all sorts of goods. According to UNICEF, over 4.9 million children of secondary school age are out of school in Nigeria with serious concerns that most of them may take to crime and other social vices. This seminar tagged the future of Wari Child, organized by the Office of a sole representative of the Ulu of Wari, is targeted towards awakening the importance of education and the role that every stakeholder must play to ensure that all children in Wari receive proper education. We are going to do more to make sure that we have better schools, make sure that we have better classrooms, to make sure that, I'm sure that teachers are going to be on this one, we have a better curriculum. Yes, I'm going to say the government needs to improve our curriculum. We have spoken about this for a very long time, but now is the time that we need to begin to actually begin to take actions in that line. Okay. The Ulu of Wari, who is represented by one of the palace chiefs, encourages children to work hard to attain their dreams. Your vision is in your hand as a student. Not in the hands of your parents, teacher, or anybody. When others are sleeping, you don't need to sleep. You need to read your book. In Kenya, when I was in our time, there was only like science. But when I left there, the passion was to become what? An engineer. When I left there, I went to school of business study for that course. Then I did science for one year and I created all my papers. Today, I'm a professional engineer. Organizers reel out other plans to the pipeline to complement this effort. During my six years in Anna College, we used to have debates, quiz, we used to have um, literary and debating. Um, society. There were jet clubs, there were other things, you know, that were going on. But right now, there is nothing like that. And that vacuum has created space for our youth to be involved with drug abuse, taking um, psychopathic substances. They want to be high. They are involved in primary um, unprotected sex. So we want to fill that vacuum. That's why we have introduced um, the Ogyami Atuash Intercollegiate um, Quiz and Debate Competition. The high number of out-of-school children has been identified as a major cause of internet fraud, drug addiction, and other social vices. This seminar hopes to create opportunities to nurture them into becoming responsible adults. You're watching Newsroom series on Channels Television. Still ahead, we'll bring you a partnership between Edo State and Delta State in regards to education. Stay with us.
Welcome back. The Edo State Government is partnering with Delta and Jigawa States on improving learning outcomes with the Edo Basic Education Sector Transformation Edo Best Initiative. Some officials of the visiting states' basic education boards were in Benin City, the Edo State capital, for a tour of some facilities under the Edo Best program. Class is in session at Ohoro Primary School in Benin City, the Edo State capital, with officials of the Jigawa and Delta State's education ministries in attendance. The team is in Edo State to study the Edo Best model. They want to get first-hand experience of the basic education initiative. Classrooms, 10,685 and pupils, 300 and... The entourage is then conducted on a tour of the Edo Best Situation Room for further information. The success of how well the two MDAs, um, that's the ministry and the, the board, manage themselves really in line with how the, the executive government is able to manage you know, those relationships. At the end of the session, the chairman, Jigawa State Subeb, Professor Usman Harino, gives his assessment of the Edo Best Initiative. What His Excellency, the governor of Edo State, has done is a complete transformation because the learners are now willing to learn, the teachers are ready in school, and they are ready to do their work as expected, and the focus are really, the attendance is really improving. On the overall, the out of school is reducing which is very, very important. It's an issue worth considering. The visiting states are showing their host of future collaboration on areas of common interest. Uh, our tour, the Edo, will give us to the opportunity uh, to know the strides they have made here. And uh, we will also like to use the various opportunities to tell Edo people how education is being run in Jagawa State. We've just come to Edo State to see what they are also doing. Uh, that is uh, uh, strange from what we are doing and uh, see from it, if possible, where we can uh, adapt to some of their programs. The partnership between Edo, Delta and Jigawa States on basic education transformation does not stop with this visit. Talks of further engagements are in progress. The managing director of the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, Samuel Ogboku, has announced that 10,000 beneficiaries of the Youth Internship Scheme will receive a monthly stipend from December 2024. This is as the NDDC managing director also assured that the commission will sustain its support for the police and other security agencies to effectively carry out their task of protecting lives and property in the region. Mr. Boko was speaking separately during his declaration as an ambassador extraordinaire of the University of Ibado and a curtsy visit by the recently deployed Commissioner of Police in River State. The delegation from the University of Ibado includes its Vice Chancellor, Professor Kayode Adebowale, Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Peter Olakwekba, the Registrar, and other top management of the Premier University. They are at the NDDC headquarters in Port Harcourt, the River State capital, to honor the Commission's Chief Executive Officer, Samuel Obuku, as part of activities marking the university's 75th anniversary. Under its administration, there has been significant improvement in critical concerns of the region, which include health care, in the construction of 142 health care centers that is equipped with modern facilities. And there are currently free healthcare programs that has produced nothing less than 20,000 surgeries, attending to nothing less than close to 50,000 patients. It is for this reason that we want to celebrate it with the award and confirm it by the prestigious University of Ibadan as UI at 75. Ambassador Extraordinary. I hereby decorate you as UI at 75 Ambassador Extraordinary. The NDDC Managing Director is then decorated as an Ambassador Extraordinary of the University. 
for the NDDC Managing Director, the recognition by the University of Ibadan is a call on the interventionist agency under his watch to break more grounds in its development drive. He announced the commencement of payment of 50,000 Naira monthly stipend to 10,000 beneficiaries of the Commission's Youth Internship Scheme. Putting these resources in the right places to serve the people of the Niger Delta. I am not here to tell you all about our programs. We have the Youth Internship Scheme, of which the Youth Internship we have already committed to ensure that by December all our Youth Internship beneficiaries published and they are going to be paid from December in one year uh, into internship scheme. As the achievements of the Samuel Ogbuku-led management receives more recognition outside the shores of the Niger Delta, it is hoped that these gestures will spur the interventionist agency to implement more people-tailored projects and programs in the oil-rich region. The Cross Rivers Governor, Mr. Basi Otu, has proposed 498 billion naira as the state's budget for the 2025 fiscal year. Speaking during the presentation of the budget at the State House of Assembly, the Governor explained that the proposed budget tagged the budget of sustainable growth and marked 328 billion as capital expenditure and 170 for recurrent expenditure while reassuring the citizens that his administration's policy preferences are meant to snowball into the common good of the people. The governor also thanks the leadership of the State House of Assembly for building a common consensus among members to cooperate with the executive and judiciary arms of government to achieve a prosperous Cross River State. Over in Akwaibom State, the governor, Pastor Umo Eno, has expressed his profound gratitude to his colleague governors and other eminent Nigerians for their condolences and moral support since the demise of his wife. As a condolence visit on him by members of the Southern Governors Forum at the Government House Uyo, Governor Eno said the visits have been a source of support, consolation, encouragement and upliftment in his trying times. Prominent individuals and groups have continued to commiserate with the government and people of Akwaibom State on the death of the state's first lady and wife of the governor, Pastor Mrs. Patience Sumo Eno. The latest group to visit the state is Nigeria's Southern Governors Forum. In the delegation were the chairman of the forum and governor of Ogun State, Prince Adida Puabiodun, Senator Demola Adeleke of Oshun State, Peter Mba of Enugu State, Professor Charles Saludo of Anambra State, Francis Mwifuru of Ebonyi State, and Abiodo Yebanji of Ikiti State. Receiving the governors, Governor Eno describes the visit as a sacrifice of no mean measure, promising to reciprocate the gesture by committing himself more to the service of the people, even in the face of difficulty. I tell people that this is a, a lifetime mourning. It's not something you can put a closure because at every time you turn, you will always find out that there is a missing link. The consolation is that she had done things that our memories and legacies will live on. And that's why one of the things that the Holy Spirit quickly put in my mind was to get our daughter, who had of course been a PA all through the campaigns, all of, to quickly begin to coordinate the office um, because of the work she has started. I'm more interested in keeping memory of those work, uh, pet projects and all of that sustained. Commiserating with the governor, his family and the entire people of Akwaibom State, on behalf of the governors of the 17 southern states, the chairman of the forum, Anogun State Governor, Dakwa Biodun, says the bond of brotherhood is far deeper than the things that divide them, describing Mrs. Eno's death as a shared pain to all. He prays God to grant her soul eternal repose and family the fortitude and courage to go through the seizing of grief. The entire people and government of this great state, they had to bear this sad and painful loss. We know that the Almighty God Himself 
He will be your wife. He will be your friend. He will be your partner. He will be your soulmate. I will see you through this very painful period. Governor Eno describes his wife as his greatest cheerleader, most honest critic, consistent prayer partner, and one companion who understood him very well, having been with him for 40 years. And that's it on this edition of Newsroom Series. I'm Dominic. <laughs>